Hey, now I want to show you one of these uh, partial fractions where we have a, a quadratic, a perfect square in the denominator. Because there's a little trick you've got to do here. There's a little trick involved. When you want to write it as the sum of two fractions, as, as uh, breaking it up, what you want to do, since there's two repeated roots, the initial knee-jerk reaction is, say, x squared plus 3, x squared plus 3. But that's not going to work. Do you see why? They would already have the same denominator, which means you just combine the tops and you kind of lose it all. If you want to make sure you get a squared there, you've got to put a squared in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in x squared plus 3, and then here write in x squared plus 3 quantity squared. So that's, going to, that's the trick to put one of the terms like this. And that way, what we're going to see is we'll be able to actually break this up and, and pull it apart and produce the partial fractions. So um, I consider this is a quadratic here, which means I'm going to want a little linear thing up here. So let's call it a x plus b. And even though this might look like a higher kind of power, it's still just a quadratic because it's repeated. So it's just a quadratic, and so it's still going to be linear on top. That's the other little trick you have to remember. So this is going to be cx plus d. And now, just a play along as we've been doing. We need to get a common denominator, combine these things, and see what happens. So let's see uh, what we can do here. So to get a common denominator, I have to multiply the numerator and denominator of the first fraction by an x squared plus 3, top and bottom, to make it x uh, squared plus 3 squared. So doing so would yield the following. ax plus b times x squared plus 3, all divided by now x squared plus 3 quantity squared. And now I add this other term, which I just... We'll carry it along for the ride. And you notice that now the denominators are the same. So since we have a common denominator, we can just literally just add the tops. And so by adding the tops, we see ax plus b times x squared plus 3 plus cx plus d all over that common bottom. OK. And now we've got to kind of untangle all that, so there's a little bit of foiling involved. So ax times x squared is going to be ax cubed. And then my inside term is going to give me a bx squared, so it's plus bx squared. Then my outside term will give me a 3ax, so plus 3ax. And then the last times the last will be just a plus 3b. Then I don't forget about this. This is a great mistake. It's just to get so excited that you foiled. You forget everything else. You can't get too excited when you foil. You have to write out everything else. And then whoop, and that's as long as it gets. And boy, it's fun when you see a fraction get really, really long. And now let's see if we can combine some like terms. Uh, not many uh, x cubes, not many x squareds, but there are a couple of x's. So let's pull those together, and these guys are constants. So I'm just going to rewrite this for bookkeeping purposes and put all the ter x like x terms together. So the x terms, I'm going to write that as a 3a plus a c all times x. If you distribute, you'd see there's that term. And if you distribute, you see that term. And then the constant, I'm going to lump it together. You don't need the parentheses here. They're just a little superfluous. I like using that word. They're unnecessary, but it makes me happy. And if it makes me happy, it'll make everyone happy. Now, that's what we got. That's the answer if we add these two. So therefore, we see that, in fact, this equals all that. Since the denominators are identical, that means that formally the numerators must be identical. And so what we can do now is really just compare and say, OK, that means the coefficient on the x cubed term must be equal to the coefficient on the x cubed term here. And that's going to give us a little laundry list of fun facts. So here are the fun facts, which we have to use the fun pen for. So the first fun fact is that this coefficient and that coefficient have to be equal because they correspond to the um, x cubed, which means a equals 2. Well, that's a very fun fact. We just figured out what a equals. 
And the coefficient on the x squared term here has to equal the coefficient on the x squared term here. But check it out. There's no x squared term here, so of course that means there's a coefficient of 0. 0 x squared must equal b x squared, and so for free we get b equals 0. Love it. Now, the coefficient on the x term here is 5, and the coefficient on the x term here is all that stuff, so that means that 3a plus c must equal 5. And finally, the constant, and notice that's why I like to lasso it in one little parenthesis there, that constant equals the constant here, which is 0. So again, we see 3b plus d equals this time 0. And that's the system. And, that, and I didn't leave myself enough space to put a parenthesis, so I'm going to put a very gentle parenthesis. Gentle? Gentle? There we go. So that's the system. Uh, linear system that I want to consider and check it out. It's actually really easy to solve this because we already have two of the solutions so we can use some back substitution or whatever you want to call it to find the rest. For example, I can now figure out what C equals. In fact, I'm going to do this in my head to show you how cool I am. I'm going to let A equal 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus C equals 5, which means C equals negative 1. So there you have it. And then if I know that b equals 0, then it's really easy to figure out what d is. d equals 0. And so, in fact, there's my solution right here. And so if I go back, go way back to the beginning of time, I see what my coefficients should be. My coefficients should be b should be 0. So just get rid of that. d should be 0. Get rid of that. In place of a, I'm going to put a 2. And in place of C, I'm going to put a negative 1. And so what do I see? Well, if you want to write it out real nicely and real clean and real fresh, I would see that we get a 2A, I'm sorry, 2X, and then a minus X here. And if you were to actually get a common denominator, and combined, you would actually see that, in fact, this equals that. And how do we get around the, the, the neat kind of little extra stuff that we needed? Well, it basically required us solving this kind of big system, and it required the trick of writing the two fractions, one as the denominator without the square, and then one with the denominator with that uh, square. So that's what you do when you see a quadratic, a perfect square downstairs. You break it up like that. So partial fractions are awesome. It's kind of fun to take a fraction and pull it apart. We usually add them up. Now we're pulling them apart. Absolutely cool. Stay tuned to calculus to see why we actually care. I'll see you soon.